Oscar, my friend Gina has an injured leg. Mama Dorita can cure her, right? Of course. Come on, get in here. Would you believe? Gina was alive! I was flabbergasted to find her after thinking I'd lost her forever. As for the mystery we were trying to solve, we were almost worse off than in the beginning. All we had was a human finger and a bottle of formaldehyde, and that was an even greater mystery than the crucifix itself. Thank goodness I could count on Mama Dorita's help, which was more than just fixing up Gina's leg. Welcome, folks, to Chapter 6, The Indian, The Nun, now then, and The Middle Finger. Well, the master plaster I placed on her takes effect, and she'll be just like new in a short while. In the meantime, your little girlfriend had better stay here and not move a step. Thank you so much, Mama Dorita. You are so kind, ma'am. Tenada, you say your name was Brian, right? Uh, yes, ma'am. Brian. Brian Basco. Muy bien, Brian. Something tells me you are also in need of my help. What can I do for you? And please, stop calling me ma'am. Well, ma'am, I, I mean miss. I need to speak with a dead person. Do you mean speak with a spirit of a dead person? Very well, I can help you with that. However, you must know that in addition to myself, I will need a medium while I perform the call to the other side. Furthermore, experience tells me that it is of the utmost importance for the success of the seance that the person with close emotional ties to the spirit remain present. To spice things up a bit, if you catch my drift, of course, you must keep in mind that you may wish to communicate with the unliving, but the unliving may not wish to communicate with you. As for the person with close emotional ties to the spirit, there's no problem. That person is Gina. Very well then, that problem is solved. All we have to take care of is the topic of the medium. Why do we need a medium? Look, spirits are intangible entities, and as such, they cannot produce any sounds whatsoever, unless they enter into the body of a living person and use it in order to speak. That is what mediums are for. They are referred to as horses in certain cultures. <laughs> Cyber Vato. Where can I find a medium around here? I used to cool work with a woman of from Nakozari, Luchador. the town south of the Mexican border. She was an excellent medium. Looks that's her dead husband off to the right. She experienced a bit of a rough sound, and she swore never to work as a medium again. Besides the woman from Nakozari, I don't know of anyone else around here. What about using Oscar as a medium? Impossible! Oscar is a marvelous person, but he is in no way prepared to act as a medium. I think I could be a medium. You? I think not. Come closer and look into my eyes. No, you cannot. Your eyes reveal that you are unprepared to lower your level of consciousness enough to fall into a trance. Okay. I am delighted. How did Oscar start working for you? Well, I can't tell you anything about Oscar's past life. That is his own business, and it is up to him to speak about it if he wishes. What I can tell you is that his life had gone astray when I made him. He was like a boy lost in the woods, with no idea where to turn. I did what I could to help him, because I immediately sensed a pure soul trapped inside that strong, huge body. He is very grateful to me, and that is why he insists on remaining by my side. I have told him time and again to get on with his life and forget about me. But he says his only mission in life is to stick by me and serve me in every possible way. I'd like to see Gina. Go ahead. You know where to find her. Gina. Brian, hi. Hey, you shouldn't move that leg too much. Mama Dorita says you'll heal in no time, as long as you rest. No wonder it broke. It looks like a fucking toothpick. The concoction that woman put in my leg is really making me itch. Plus, I can't stop thinking about what you told me inside the mine as we were coming here. Especially the part about the human finger in the bottle of formaldehyde. My god, Brian, what are we gonna do now? Well, I've been giving it some thought, and all I can think of is one thing. What do you propose? Look. I can't stop thinking about something that Indian chief told me. That Wapu something guy? Wapuchim, yeah. I have
asked him what that bottle with the finger meant, and he said that the man who took it there should answer that question. I told him, that guy is dead. But Wapuchim said that wasn't necessarily an obstacle. You mean we should talk with... Yes, with your father. I know it'll be hard for you, but I don't see any other way out. I understand. Don't worry about it, but do you really think we can speak with a dead person? Just a few days ago, I would have answered you with a resounding no. But now, after all the things that have happened to me, and what I've seen since we met, I don't know. I think almost anything is possible. Besides, what harm can it do to try? I guess none. <laughs> what have we got to lose? But how in the world will we do it? With the help of Mama Dorita. She's knowledgeable about these things. However, there's one thing that concerns me. Wapuchim said that the person who hid the bottle in the sacred crypt had Hopi blood, so it couldn't have been your father. Oh, yeah, no, of course not. It couldn't be him. Well, I suppose there are more people mixed up in this strange story. Yeah, I guess that's it. Anyway, your dad has to be able to explain everything. I'm sure he can. So when should we do it? I have to get a medium for the seance. Okay, well, keep me informed, please. How are you feeling? Better and better. I must admit, Mama Dorita knows what she's doing. I'm out of here. I have to work on finding a medium. That's okay. I hate having to stay here without moving and without helping you. You just have to think about healing as fast as you can. See you later. Be careful. Bye-bye. All right, let's head back to Douglasville. Go talk to our homegirl Sushi. Be village, did you? Come on, get up here right away and tell me how you did it. Okay, I'm coming. Please don't tell me this bitch has internet. She does have some five and a quarter drive. How did you find out? News gets around fast. And a runaway no, screensaver. Didn't come back from the Hopi village alone. You didn't tell me about the girl. You see, I thought she was dead, and I didn't feel like talking about it. Oh, I think there are lots of things you'd rather not talk to me about. Don't you think it's time you told me the truth about how you got here? Well, all right, but I'm. You have really you. big legs. A crazy story. And really oh, small worry. titties. All the better. Here goes. Mama Dorita's house letting her leg heal while I try to figure out the meaning of a bottle of formaldehyde with the human finger floating inside. That's all. You didn't believe a word I said, did you? No, you're wrong. I know when someone lies to me and you weren't lying. Plus, Brian, <laughs> I kind of like you. You can count on me to give you a hand with whatever you need. That's great, Sushi. Thanks. Sushi wants my chopstick. If you know what I mean. Hey, that guy over there must be Rutger. Looks like fucking Bob Marley on some bongos. Hello, Rutger, right? Yeah, and you're Brian, I bet. Saturn's told me about you. By the way, that helmet you gave me is way cool. You wouldn't happen to have another one for me, would ya? No, sorry. I only have that one. Well, if you ever come across another one, keep Mr. Rutger in mind. Sure thing. Awesome man. Speaking of reggae, Rastafarianism, and Bob Marley, uh, the Game Hoarder is going to go see Ziggy Marley in October, so I'm kind of excited about that. I always kind of... Uh, was a pretty big reggae fan growing up, so uh, a chance to go see the son of Bob Marley, the legend, is uh, something I can't pass up. I'll report back more on that in October after I go. Hey, that music you were playing sounded really neat. You thought it was cool? Playing the bongos totally mellows me out. It's my hobby, you know. The greenhouse you've set up here is really something. Ah, Thanks, man. that explains the marijuana Plants leaves. Are my life. That is the truth. I've mostly got African spices in here. You know why? 
because Africa is the mother of life. I was thinking, you wouldn't happen to know of a plant or something like that that would help a person go into a trance, would ya? To enter a trance? You mean to trip out, right? I have some knowledge in that area. Do you think you could prepare me some of that? I could, but look, I don't know if you're aware of how things work around here. Oh yeah, I should give you something in exchange. That's it, right? You got it. And what might that something be? Mm, I don't know. I don't really need anything. Something I might like, you know. Could you tell me exactly what the Rastafarian beliefs consists of? No. I'll just go on my way, Wrecker. See ya. See ya. See ya. Come on. I gotta go to Jamaica before I die. Yeah. I think that might be the thing to do. Hey, man. Smoke hey, a little Wrecker. bit of this reefer, man. Hey, what's up? I believe I have something you might be interested in. Let me see, man. Ah, yes. It's a fine poppy axe pipe. Very nice, man. I'm glad you like it. Do we have a deal, then? The pipe, in exchange for preparing what we talked about. Oh, yes. It's a deal. <laughs> right after he gets stoned. Blazing crazy, baby. Get up on that second hand, Brian. This is sweet as honey. Take a puff. No, thanks. I don't smoke. Listen, didn't you want some herbal pleasure to lighten you up a bit? Yeah, but... Well, this is the thing. Smoke. Okay. Oh, shit. He's gonna be high as fuck. 420 of that shit, baby. I'm not used to this, so, uh, one drag will do. Yep. Whoa. I feel dizzy already. I better get out of here fast. You're gonna be fucked up. I believe I'm ready to act as a medium. Hmm, let's see. Show me your eyes. <laughs> They're not even bloodshot, man. I must say your disposition for lowering consciousness enough to go into a trance has improved. But you still don't seem adequately prepared. Well, I won't buy a you need to be thoroughly stoned. Hey, Rucker. Hey, what's up? That stuff you put in the pipe didn't work. I need something a bit... Stronger. More powerful, huh? Hmm. I think I know what you need. I was just recently studying some old Indian shaman recipes. There is one that the Hopi tribe's medicine men used to use. Have you heard of them, Hopi Indians? Yeah, I've heard something about it. Apparently, these Hopi medicine men used to make a brew that was mighty strong. They said they used it to help their spirit leave their body and be able to get closer to Kichi Manitou, the great spirit. That is just what I need. Can you make it for me? I'm afraid not. I have all the ingredients except one. The most essential of all, the Yawaskel. Yawaskel? Yeah. You get it from inside these pods that grow on a plant which grows in this area. The problem is, I haven't been able to find that plant anywhere, even though I've searched throughout the region for weeks. Seems this crazy plant only grows on sacred Hopi lands. Huh. And do you know what the Yawaska looks like? From the drawings I've seen, they're bumpy bowls of a dark red color. I've studied the topic quite a bit, and though I've never seen any of those bowls myself, I'm sure I could identify one if I saw it. Hmm. Very interesting, Rutger. I've got to go now. Let's keep talking about this later. You can keep talking okay, about man. my balls later, brother. Hmm. I still have the branch I tore off the outside of the sacred crypt. And now that I've taken a closer look, there's some pods on this stem. Yeah, what luck! I bet that plant I took the branch off of is precisely the one Rucker was talking about. I'll pull the pods off the branch. Done. 
Now I should open them and see if they contain those famous little red balls. These pods are really hard. There's no way I can open them with my hands. I need something else to tear them open. It stinks like this place, but it's in pretty good shape. Okay, let's take one more peek to see what I can find. This scalpel may be just what I was looking for. Yes, using the scalpel, I can open the pods up and get the little Yawaskal balls out. Ugh, that didn't work. These pods are as hard as a rock. Ain't nothing much else, much sharper than a scalpel, I can tell you that. by the fire, but it's not in bad shape. Yes! Good idea! If I heat up the scalpel, it'll definitely cut better. I'll leave it in there for a few seconds to make it nice and hot. All right, that should do the trick. Ow! I gotta be careful. It's burning hot. All right, this time the pods will yield to my strength. Finally. Now I've got those silly Yawaskal balls. It's a lot of and balls. just in time. The scalpel's cooled down and is now at room temperature. Good thing I cut through the pods when I did. As usual, a bell and a check-in book. Whoa, Rucker's gonna flip when he sees this. Hey, Rucker. Hey, what's up? You'll never believe it. What? I've got some Yawaska balls. No way, brother. Don't believe me? Seeing is believing. Man. You're right, it's prime Yawaska. Told you so. Can you make that Hopi brew you told me about now? Of course, I'll get right to it. Perfect, I'll let you work then. Well, a long time seems to have gone by. I think that Rucker must have that brew ready. Rucker! Well, he's a stoner, so... I'm over here, man. He might have forgot about it. Is it finished? I have the finished product, and I'm telling you right now, this is some great day stuff. Those Hopis sure knew what they were doing. If this doesn't put you into orbit, I don't know what will, my friend. Okay, does this taste bad? Bad? No way. These guys even made their herbal infusions taste delicious. Drink with no fear, man. Yeah, I can feel it already. It's as if uh, I were levitating. I'm leaving before the effects get any stronger. Okay, sir, but I'm drinking the leftovers. <laughs> now I know I'm prepared enough to become a medium. You don't give up, do you? Very well, let me look into your eyes. Hmm, you win, Brian. You are dilated you as a son's you? bitch. Your eyes have revealed it. Good, your mind is ready. Now, we must prepare your soul. Prepare my soul? It is indispensable in case something goes wrong. What do you mean by that? I didn't think this was dangerous. And it is not, provided a medium is truly prepared. Believe me, preparing your soul properly will keep you from fear. Okay already, fine. What do I have to do? Kneel before the altar. Here? Yes, on your knees. 
Repeat after me. Okay. San Luciano, I pray that you care for my soul while it is absent from my body. San Luciano, I pray that you care for my soul while it is absent from my body. Santa Brigida, protect me with your cloak and do not allow the devil to take over my body. Santa Brigida, protect me with your cloak and do not allow the devil to take over my body. Is that a little me in a coffin? My Jesus, my soul is clean and ready to travel to your side if you wish it to be so. Jesus, my soul is clean and ready to travel to your side if you wish it to be so. Enough. Please rise. Okay, should I bring in Gina so we can get this over with? Not so fast. We won't be doing it here. We are going to the Well of Souls. Where? Do not worry, it's a proper place. Do you see the well to my right? That is a place. Go. Do we really have to go in there? Yes, we do. Think no longer and go in. Vamonos! You will see a seat inside of our pentagram. Sit in it and prepare your mind. Oscar will help Gina and me down. All right, whatever you say. Let's begin. Now, Brian, it is important for you to stay relaxed. Was it really necessary to tie me to the chair? See, si, believe me. It was for your own safety, I assure you. Now, stare into my eyes, por favor. All the tension is flowing out of your body. You are relaxed, more and more relaxed. You feel good, muy bien. I am going to count to three. And when I finish, you will fall into a deep slumber. One, two, three. We are here to contact the being from the other side. We have the will and the medium. We have the will and the medium. The medium awaits in the center of the pentagram. Someone from this plane wishes to speak with that being. We invoke that being with all due respect. We have the will and the medium. Gina, it's your turn. Speak with that spirit. Tell him you want to talk with him. Johnny, Johnny the Indian, it's me, Gina. I need to talk with you. You were about to tell me something and we were interrupted. Now we have a chance to finish our conversation. Johnny, it's me, Gina. Please talk to me. <laughs> Andretti's got you. Yes, I remember. You were talking to the pink iguana when those scrubs showed up, but I don't remember anything more. Where have I been? It's dark here, and I'm freezing. Johnny, look, you're... you're... locked up. The Sandretti's locked you into the basement, under the storeroom, in the pink iguana. Damn them. Gina, you've got to help me. Get me out of here, and I'll take you with me. We'll be rich, kiddo, and we'll live like kings. So, it's true? You kept the money from the truck heist? Of course I did. I pulled one over on those bastards. I'll share the cash with you, baby. Just get me out of here fast. Now's not a good time. There's guards all over the place. I'll come get you out later. But tell me, where did you hide the money? The Sandrettis haven't been able to find a clue. <laughs> of course they haven't found it. You think I'm an idiot? Those evil doers will never find the money. <laughs> you are so sly, Johnny. Where is it hidden? Yeah, kiddo. Too smart to trust you, too. I'm not telling you one more word. Get me out of here, and I'll give you your piece of pie. Mm, okay. All right. I'll come back in a while and help you escape. I'll be waiting. Make it quick. Johnny? Johnny? He has departed. And I must say I don't like what I saw one bit. Gina, you have toyed with a spirit. And that can be very dangerous. I hope you don't regret it later on. But let us set that topic aside. Brian is exhausted and needs to rest. Oscar, untie Brian and take him to my room. Lay him on the bed and let him sleep as long as he needs.
Gina! Oscar put you in bed. You've been asleep for nearly 24 hours. The effort of being a medium left you exhausted. Do you remember anything that happened in the Well of Souls? Enough! Everything seemed like a dream. It was like I was floating above your heads. But I perfectly remember that you didn't invoke your father. No, it was Johnny. Johnny the Indian. That's it. Well, don't you think you owe me an explanation? Yes, I guess so. Well, here goes. Remember everything I told you about my father's death in the hospital? Yeah, of course I remember. Well, it wasn't exactly true. You mean, your father didn't? No, he's perfectly fine. And he doesn't work for the government, like I said. He breeds sheep in Marion Bridge. Lion parrot tits. So you invented all of that? Not exactly. Let me explain. I really did work at the Pink Iguana, but I wasn't really a singer. I performed in another type of show. Hmm. That night. That's my kind of show. I talked to Johnny the Indian, a pretty shady fellow who had just gotten out on parole. Johnny had had a few too many. He told me he was going to start a new life and that I should go with him. He showed me the crucifix he wore around his neck the whole four years he spent in prison and said it was the key that would open the door to that new life. He was drunk and I didn't take him very seriously. I thought the guy was embracing Christianity or something like that. And then the Sandretti brothers showed up. Johnny asked me to keep the crucifix for him and to disappear before they saw me. Everything I told you about my father's death in the storeroom of the pink iguana was true. But it wasn't my father they killed. It was Johnny. They interrogated him and beat him to a pulp. I'd heard of the Sandretti brothers and how dangerous they are. But that night, I saw it with my own eyes. When I saw them kill Johnny, I couldn't help but scream. So they found me out and I ran as fast as I could down the alley. But why were they interrogating him? What did he do? Well, Johnny had just spent four years in the slammer for holding up a truck. The whole heist was set up by the Sandrettis. Johnny was part of the group that did the job. In the beginning, the theft was a success. A fast robbery with no deaths or injuries. The money was supposed to be handed over to the Sandrettis in a garage a few hours later. But someone set a trap. The garage was full of cops and the thieves were arrested. Luckily for them, the Sandrettis didn't show up personally, so no one could prove they were involved. However, they didn't catch all the thieves. For some reason, Johnny managed to get away, and they didn't find him till two days later, near the Mexican border. More importantly, the money from the robbery never appeared. What do you mean? It wasn't in the garage, and Johnny didn't have it when they arrested him. He swore he escaped from the garage without taking a cent. Despite all their investigations, the police never found the cash. From what I heard the night they killed Johnny, the Sandretti suspected he'd kept the money and that he was the one who informed the cops and set up the raid on the garage. They thought he hid in the dough somewhere during the two days he was hiding out and that he had let himself get caught so the Sandrettis wouldn't suspect anything. You think someone with that much money would allow himself to be caught knowing he'd be put away for years? Yeah, if he didn't have any other choice. He knew that if he ran off with the money, the Sandrettis would find out and hunt him down long before the police did. He must have thought 20 million bucks were well worth four years in prison. 20 million? 20 million. No doubt Johnny thought that by the time he was released, the Sandrettis would have forgotten the whole story and that he could enjoy a great retirement. But things didn't work out that way. The Sandrettis don't forget 20 million bucks just because. And they were looking for him the day he got out of jail. So, when the Sandrettis interrogated him, did they get the truth out of him? No, that animal Gustav killed him too fast, and Johnny never acknowledged having kept the money. So we don't know if Johnny really even had it. Oh, yes we do. He told me so through your mouth during the seance. The bad thing is, I couldn't get him to tell me where he hid the money. So... All you were really interested in the whole time was getting that money, huh? No, well, at least not at first. I was just trying to save my life. I had been an eyewitness to a murder and knew that they would snuff me out to keep me from talking. After that, I admit I thought if we found the money, I could start a new life far from the Sandrettis. <laughs> is that so terrible? Depends on how you look at it. What I don't understand is why they didn't knock us off in Chicago when they had us trapped in the museum. Someone at the Pink Iguana probably told them Johnny had talked to me before they killed him. They must have thought I knew something about the money, and they wanted to get it out of me. Lucky you were so great and got us out of that awful cabin. 
Oh, don't suck up to me now. You've been fooling me all this time. I'm such an idiot. I walked right into your trap. Please, Brian. That was the titty trap. I swear I never wanted to lie to you, but I was scared to death. And I was afraid you wouldn't help me if I told you the truth. Well, you're wrong there. I'm so stupid I'd have helped you anyway. But this is the end of it. I'm leaving straight for California, and you? No, please. You know they'll kill me. Sooner or later they'll find me and do me in. My only chance is to find the money and use it to start a new life. You know that. Please don't leave me alone now. Help me. Okay. I'll help you find that cursed money. And then, I never want to see you again as long as I live. Don't say that. I really care about you. Oh, please. Don't play me for a sucker again. I already said I'd help you. Save the sorry act for the theater. Don't believe me if you don't want to, but I'm being sincere. Besides, if we find the money, half will be yours. I don't want a dime of that money. Do whatever you want. You well, crazy? We know Johnny safeguarded the money somewhere nearby. And no matter how strange it seems, the finger in the bottle must have something to do with it. But where should we start to look? Look, while you were asleep, I remembered something Johnny told me years ago, before the robbery. What? He said that he used to take time off between jobs to spend a few days in his homeland in Arizona, in an old trailer where he used to live before going to New York. That trailer can't be very far from here. And if we find it, maybe there'll be some clues about the money inside. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Well, I'll start with that and try to find that trailer. I'm going with you. My leg is much better. No way. You haven't recovered yet, and I don't want to have to carry you. Are you going to be mad at me for the rest of your life? <laughs> no, I'm only going to carry you, you if it's show. reverse piggyback. Fine. Just go alone if my company annoys you. I'm leaving, but don't worry. I'll be back. Goodbye. I'm going to see that front butt. Sooner or later, your front butt is mine. That wraps up this episode, folks. Stay tuned for the final part of Chapter 6. The grand finale, coming at ya.